Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Wednesday. Two more games for us to look at for the play-in situation. Yesterday, we had some good games to watch. Seth Curry could have used some more performance, a better performance out of him. He had zero points, I think four fantasy points. Couldn't have had a worse game. Uh, so that kind of put a damper on things. But overall, we go ahead and talk about tonight, see if we can get back on track. As always, if you enjoy the videos, appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. All the socials and links are in the description. And let's go ahead and get into it. Looking at the point guard picks today, we have three guys above 9K. Or four guys above 9K. Murray, Trey Young, LaMelo, and McCollum. I've kind of like Murray the most. He's 10-8. We saw him get one game under his belt after dealing with a pretty severe illness. Only shot 5 of 15. But at least he got his legs under him, played 32 minutes. He's looking at like 38-40 minutes in this playing situation. They don't really have any other guy that's going to be able to uh, make a ton of plays for them and really just spark things. He does it all for them offensively, even defensively. He is their best player. Then we have Trey Young going up against Charlotte. He hasn't played great against Charlotte this year, averaging just 44 and four meetings. But he ended the season on a tear in terms of just getting you a crazy amount of assists every, every night, putting up good points, uh, getting you a lot of threes, getting you some rebounds. And he's at home where he typically has played better this year, averaging just 30 real life points at home. So don't mind Trey Young. I do like Murray for 200 more. And then LaMelo. I like those other guys a little bit more than LaMelo. Just because I think you can get to some savings on his team. LaMelo also ended the year playing pretty well. He was handling the ball more and getting some more minutes. Uh, we saw him get finished with 9 plus assists in 4 straight games. He's a good rebounder for a guard just because he's so big. And been scoring at a pretty good clip. His three-point shooting was off the chart, so you don't expect like six or seven or five or nine too often. But he ha had finished the season shooting uh, almost 40% from three, so he definitely can light it up. But I do prefer Murray and Trey Young over LaMelo and McCollum. I like getting to Brennan Ingram instead of 9,000 for McCollum. Um, I like Rozier a lot at 68 think you can save some money and go with Rozier you're saving almost three thousand dollars from ball and we saw times of the season where Rozier was putting up big fantasy games outscoring uh, LaMelo and still wasn't getting as much ownership as LaMelo was so today saving three thousand dollars for a guy that does give you monster upside still uh, does shoot a lot and does get you some peripherals with assisting and rebounding a little bit I think he's just a really good value at 68 the price tag has come down on him you're not going to be looking at Trey Jones now that Murray's back at that price tag. And then value-wise, you can look to like Primo, 34. He's still getting you decent minutes here. You know, over 25 most games can get up to 30. 34, he looks like a decent option for a value-wise play. And you have like Devontae Graham, but that's not too interesting for me. And that's basically it. DeLon Wright will get some minutes today because there's no Lou Williams. Uh, shooting guard, like Rozier's price tag a lot, I have him. Plugged in here already. I think we can go to Brandon Ingram as well. At 83. Uh, I like him more saving more money than going to McCullum at 9,000. Other options are definitely Bogdanovich at 57. He comes off the bench, but that's like a perfect role for him. Getting more ball handling duties. Getting more usage. Shooting more. You know, when some of these starters are off the floor. And he can easily put up a big fantasy game at this price tag. So I have Bogdanovich also looking like a great play today. Uh, but going back to Brennan Ingram, plugged him in at small forward, but he's, he's probable today should play. I mean, he was dealing with some injuries down the stretch, didn't play a ton of games, but he, he's the type of guy that can uh, just still a uh, can be a stone cold killer out there. Does contribute with rebounding, assisting, high usage rate for him. Should play heavy minutes. The price tag is expensive, but we, he's not even that. It's not that crazy, considering that we should see heavy minutes out of him. They're at home, and this is a, a very very important game to say the least for both teams. So other plays at shooting guard we can look to are uh, Kelly Oubre at 39 because Gordon Hayward is out for an extended period of time. Well, at least indefinitely. So Oubre should get some minutes off the bench at this price tag. He's worthy in tournaments. Same thing can be said for Cody Martin at 37. Going to be looking at over 20 minutes out of both of those guys coming off the bench. And it's kind of it at shooting guard. You also have Herder, who I didn't mention, but I kind of prefer some of these other guys on Atlanta over Herder. Small forward, you have Bridges, 71. 
viable option here. I liked getting to Ingram at his price tag. You know, instead of going to Herder, I think you can save some money and maybe go to DeAndre Hunter, who's going to be looking at good minutes today. He's, he was averaging like almost 30 on the season, and we saw him play more uh, since like Collins has been out. You know, he had one terrible game here against Miami, but that's a good defensive team otherwise. He has been hitting value. The price tag has come down on him to be only $4,300. Looks like a very nice play. Other options would be Gallinari at 52. He's been starting and has been putting up some good fantasy games. You know he's a little bit scoring dependent, but he does have a very nice three-point shot. And looking for value, maybe Jaden McDaniel is also going to get some decent minutes off the bench. He did finish the season with some good fantasy games, shooting the ball particularly well against the Wizards and against the Bulls, where the team just could not miss from the floor. Over at Power Forward, Keldon Johnson is 7K. He's pretty expensive. I'd rather go down to like Gallinari here or go down to maybe like McDaniels or just take a shot on some of these value pieces here. Larry Nance, but I like McDaniels more than Nance. Over at center, payup is Valanchunas, 86. Going up against Jakob Pertl. I, mean, I think I can save 2K and go to Pertl instead. Uh, he should be good in, getting a lot of minutes today to match up to Valanchunas and like Hayes and this big... Uh, centers that this t Pelicans team likes to roll out. Has played well against the Pelicans all year, averaging 36 fantasy games, double-double easily. Go ahead and put him in my center spot. And it leaves you with you know, under 4K left for the last couple of spots, but you're probably going to be looking for value. Anyways, did have some value that we can look to. Even at center, you have some. Like Montres Harrell at just 35. He's a very good fantasy player, point per minute wise. Well over a fantasy point per minute and Another guy that could be looking at over 20 minutes. So I like Harrell a lot more than, especially Washington. You could make a case for Plumlee at only 4,000. Make a case for maybe a Kongwu. Um, and then at the guard and forward position, looking at below 4,000, you have Delon Wright, 32. Primo, 34. Montres Harrell, 35. Cody Martin, 37. McDaniels, 38. Those are the guys that kind of stick out. So that's about it for the DraftKings side. Let's go ahead and talk about FanDuel. All right, over on FanDuel for us, point guard picks. We have Murray at 10-6, Trey Young at 10-1. I like the price tag on LaMelo. You can save a lot more money than you do on DraftKings between the top two guys. And then Rozier still looks like a nice play at only 67. Value-wise, you're looking at Cody Martin maybe at 41, DeLon Wright maybe at 38. But position where you probably want to pay up, you have two of the Best fantasy players on this two-game slate at the point guard position with Murray, Trae Young, even throw Lomelo in the mix. At shooting guard, McCollum is a little bit cheaper. Bogdanovich is a lot more expensive, so you know, I have some other guys that I have interest in on FanDuel at shooting guard. Going with Rozier on both sides at this price tag. Other picks could be Primo at 42, Lonnie Walker at 45, Martin and Ubre, two other guys that you can look to. Small forward. Plug in Brendan Ingram, for sure. I like him way more than Keldon Johnson. I like him a lot more than Bogdanovich at that price tag. Bridges makes some sense as well at 69. He's kind of a hit-or-miss fantasy guy. Some games he's going to get you in the high 20. Some games he's going to get you over 40. So pretty risky. I mean, pretty volatile in terms of his fantasy games. But on a two-game slate, could definitely be worth it. And then other plays would be DeAndre Hunter at only 43. And that's kind of the main value piece I'm looking at. At power forward, your main payup is Keldon Johnson at almost 8000 I can pass on that. Rather go down to Gallinari at 53 You have a couple of pieces in the 4K range that we can look to, like Montrez Harrell at 4000 and Jada McDaniels at 42 uh, Right now, there's just not a ton of great picks at this position. So I might as well just put in Gallo, at least a guy that's starting, and we know he's going to get some good minutes. And then last but not least, over at center, Valanchunas, 8,000, Clint Capella at 73. We've seen Capella put up some good fantasy games. This price tag uh, recently has been getting the minutes. Uh, the minutes aren't always there some of these games, but against Houston, kind of expect you know, not to play huge minutes near the end of the season. But against this uh, Hornets team, which will play guys like, start with Plumlee at least, and they'll, they'll play P.J. Washington maybe at the stretch five. And they'll play like Harrell at the stretch five. Capella's a guy that can get fantasy production even without uh, playing a ton of minutes. Just with the blocks that he gets you, the rebounding, the points, um, easy looks at the basket. Go ahead and put in Capella at this price tag. We can make some adjustments if we need to. 
Uh, but I definitely think Capella at 73 is one of the three guys I'm considering, Capella, Pirtle, and Valanchunas. Don't think I'll go to any of these value pieces at center. Only guy I could maybe consider is like Montres Harrell at 4K, but that's about it for the video. Best of luck tonight, and I will see you all next time.